you're going to need a lot, and I mean a lot, of knickknack vouchers, monster parts, fortitude crystals, and curios to get some of the best sigils and power increases in the game. So, we're going to show you our best end game farms to get all of these things and more with relative ease, because some quests are definitely better than others. With V plus sigils becoming available at the higher difficulty levels, it means you can get two traits on one sigil starting both at level 11 and then upgraded to level 15 on both for just one sigil slot. This means you can farm for the best possible sigil combinations to fully upgrade and power up your characters. In addition to this, the curios are an extra loot item that you get from various quests which can be appraised in Seed Hollow and will reward you with a variety of sigils and materials and from our experience, this can include specific sigils with some very interesting and powerful effects like roll of the dice, causing your attacks to either deal 1 damage or between 1 to 4 times more damage to a new damage cap of 999. 999. There's also War Elementalist that makes all of your attacks deal the elemental weakness of an enemy, so as you can see some of these are very rare and cool and you get them through the curio system. So as this is an end game farm you will need to have the final difficulty level proud unlocked as this gives us access to fighting the strongest versions of the different elemental dragons which advise that you have an 11,000 power rating. Honestly we've never had too much trouble fighting these both solo or duo with NPCs, it's probably best to fight one that is weak to your your character's elements so you'll be dealing nearly double damage to them. So for me as a Siegfried main this would mean that the ice version is probably best for me to farm and each dragon will have a very similar moveset but do apply different statuses or damage based on their element. So for example the ice dragon will cause glaciate and do a load of aoes during bloodthirst meanwhile the fire one will cause burning and do massive moving waves of fire that you must jump over during bloodthirst. So here's what makes these quests so good for farming. Firstly if you do all the side quests you get 50 knickknack vouchers per quest completion which is definitely a big bonus just passively to get straight up. You also get a ton of materials, rainbow prisms, legendary merits, dragon scales and dragon wings and jewels on each kill which can then be traded in for knickknack vouchers with a very good price for material return. The rainbow prisms, legendary merits and dragon wings will give you 5 vouchers per one and the scales give 3 per one and you get these in abundance. This in addition to the other materials that you get a along the way means you can easily get up to or over a hundred vouchers per run so this combined with the chance for getting sigils, good right stones and the large fortitude crystals as well as those silver centrums that rarely drop you will be in a good spot when it comes to your material reserves or knickknack vouchers by farming this quest repeatedly. So after a few of these runs you will have a hefty amount of vouchers, materials, sigils and right stones so then you can try your luck with the highest level of transmute where you can get some very nice V plus sigils and even character specific ones from the Trans Marvel once you've done enough of those transmutations. Next, if you're looking for an amazing XP, mastery, and money farm, then we have you covered. The last survival quest you unlock called Seed Hollow Castle will have you defeat as many slimes as possible in a three minute timer. This is insane for massive XP and money, giving us nearly 300k rupees per run, with the additional drop items selling for roughly another 100k. This is on top of the 1 to 1,500 mastery points and XP that you get per run, which makes it amazing and repeatable for XP, money and rupees so you never go broke again. If you are however looking for fortitude crystals and silver centrums to boost up your crewmates weapons then we have another two that we recommend. The maniac difficulty double hunt quests Serenity Upon the Mount and Skyworm Valley will have you run through a level killing some mobs until you reach the double boss at the end. In the end game both of these quests are pretty easy and quick to complete but reward you with a decent amount of large fortitude crystals and the chilling demon eyes or griffin beaks that you can then trade for silver centrums. This makes them very effective farms for the crystals and silver centrums at the same time. We like running these back to back to level up our alt weapons and get those collection masteries or when we're trying out other characters. But next let's jump in the game and try some transmuting and open some curios to see if we get lucky. Alright so we've done a bunch of farming and I've prepared a ton of things for us to open to see if we get lucky. If you go over to the knickknack shack you can go into transmute sigils and I basically farmed and done a load of these vouchers to build up 
the, uh, oh, a level 5 one, not too bad, although Provoke, I wouldn't use it. Uh, to build up a ton of these Trans Marvels here, basically each one of these pools gives you points towards a Trans Marvel, which is kind of like a guaranteed V+, plus, probably going to give you something good, maybe a right stone. And of course, like you can see here, it has those character specific sigils and they can roll twice on one. I am in desperate need of damage cap plus sigils. I'm also in desperate need of a double Siegfried character specific sigil. So if we can get anything like that, I'm going to be absolutely ecstatic. We got seven pulls. Let's see how lucky we get. Starting off with a life on the line plus with improved dodge. Life on the line is a massive damage increase, but it means you cannot be healed by other party members' potions. So it's got a bit of a trade-off, and improved dodge is actually pretty nice because if you can upgrade this sigil to max, it only goes to level 15. You get basically an increased window to do your dodge invulnerability perfect dodging. So this one's not actually that bad, to be honest, but I haven't been using life on the line too much, so not too impressed for me. Let's try another one out. Oh my gosh! Lord's Awakening Plus, this is, I think that picture is Percival. So we've just got Percival's double <laughs> sigil on the same one. 269 is going to be so salty about this. He has been chasing this. He's the Percival main. I haven't played Percival myself yet, but he doesn't have this. And I know he's been chasing this for hours. So I can't wait. I can't wait to send this over to 2-6. But unfortunately, I don't know if I'll be using it. Maybe I have to switch over and become a Percival main. Next up, we have an insult to injury plus with sand tomb resistance. This is, to be honest, those resistance ones, I just don't think you need them. So that is absolutely rubbish. I will literally just turn that back into vouchers. So that's a bit of a letdown. Next up, we've got veterans vision with damage cap on it. I think that's Eugen. It's either Rackham or Eugen. I think it's Eugen's. And to have damage cap on it, that's actually really quite good because you really do want damage cap and on these character specific ones they roll at level 15 as you can see so it's level 15 damage cap on there that is a massive one for any you know what i might have to put that on my organ straight away that is that is pretty good i'm quite happy with that we got three more i think let's see if what we can get a stun power plus with low profile low profile is not really something i've ever found that i've needed and stun power while nice on some characters i don't know if i would build it specifically so again that's just fodder not going to keep that we have a right stone next stun power nine fast learner seven quick cooldown so having quick cooldown is actually pretty nice and fast learner is nice too so you could put i could basically imbue that on an alts weapon and they'd get fast learner seven you know and a little bit of stun power and quick cooldown so that's not too bad that's usable on an alt if uh if they're not level 100 yet so i might put that on an alt weapon and then next we have oh it's fairy's sigil uh, but also Glaciate resistant. So Glaciate is really annoying. However, I again, I just, I've never needed to actually slot in resistance. So I don't know if that's, I mean, until you get something better, I guess it's usable, but it's not the perfect role. So that's all of my trans marvels, my seven trans, that was like over a thousand vouchers worth of trans marvels, by the way, that was a real <laughs> a real grind fest to get them but we got a really good Percival one that 2-6 is going to be jealous over so I'm well, secretly kind of happy with that even though we didn't get anything for Siegfried but I've also been saving up my curios I've got 13 here these are from farming the dragons you get one per run this has the chance of war elementalist 2-6 has got two war elementalists from this and I've got zero and it's a massively uh, beneficial sigil to have so let's jump into it come on if we can get war elementalist my build is going to be so juiced my damage will go through the roof it's literally the only thing i'm looking for okay we got a ton of stuff only one of them says new so i am i don't know if we got it uh but we got a right stone here weak point damage attack hp again fight level 552 not amazing usable but not amazing we got a land beast horn of uh, valley bloom we got a level four plus sigil I don't really, at this point in the game, I'm only using fives. So these level four plus ones, they don't really have a space in my build. We also got a level five steady focus. Not bad. I think this makes your charged attacks uninterruptible. So it could be good on someone like EO. We have another four plus attack burn resistance. Absolutely rubbish. We have a level five stronghold. I didn't have a level five version of that. So that's pretty cool. We also got a level five nimble onslaught not really worth a slot on its own but pretty good on a on a v plus and we got a level five tyranny tyranny pretty good if you can take the health trade-off so pretty happy with tyranny gives you a massive attack increase but lowers your health 
We got an extension bracer. We got a another... Wait, is that the second steady focus? We got two level five steady focuses. An inferno orb and another four plus. Pretty disappointed with these curios. At this point, I only need five pluses or the war elementalists and I didn't get it this time. So I guess, guys, it's back to the old grind for me as I try and get some of these sigils. But I hope these farms help you out. I hope you enjoyed doing these pulls with me along the way. And if you made it this far in the video, I'm going to give you good luck for your next trans marvel. So let me know in the comments what you got from your next trans marvel. I'm sending you good luck to get your character's specific one. Subscribe for more Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, and we'll see you guys soon.